Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Are you looking for a great gift idea for someone on your shopping list? Today, we will be looking at the 1975 Ferrari 308 GTB. Now this model kit comes out of my own personal collection and this is the wrong box lid for the model kit. However, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. Now we wind the clock all the way back to 1975 as we look at this Tokyo Marui 1975 Ferrari 308. Now I know this is in the wrong box, but this is part of this series. I don't know where this lid actually came from, but what's cool about it is, of course, the Smokey and the Bandit style artwork with the big uh, Trans Am in the back here, or the Pontiac Firebird, whatever it is, as a police car rolling over somewhere near San Francisco. I mean, this is great artwork. Uh, up along the side of the box here, though, you can see different pictures of what's going on and this is the box lid that it is supposed to be the 308 GTB which again is quite neat so let's uh, actually turn this around and we'll open up the offending box lid and get rid of it so that we can see what's inside here so here you get the instruction sheet and the only way I found out what the manufacturer was by looking at this down here. So that was interesting. The body comes in a plastic bag and looks excellent. There's the undercarriage. Again, this is a battery powered car, much like that Buick was. There is a broken piece here in the suspension. Ah, that's not too good. Something that must have happened in its entire lifespan. Then we have all these little components in the bag, which is part of the electric wire motor combination. Our black plastic parts tree which again is another cool thing then we've got rear wheels real rubber wheels is what I'm trying to say and some glue included now here's the artwork for that instruction sheet which you can see a lot better and somebody really has a <laughs> a really cool art sense for what's going on in America over in Japan so here we have this Ferrari, which is out racing cops on motorbikes, I guess like chip style cops, as it's screaming down Las Vegas on some kind of sunset set strip kind of thing going on here. So again, like really cool from Tokyo Marui. Love to know who the artist is and I'd love to see all these box arts. Love to have a, uh, you know, collection of just that. Now, unlike the Buick Skyhawk, all of these instructions here are printed in English, so we do know what's going on. It says to read these carefully, be careful with your knives, all that kind of stuff. So again, very cool that they did do it in an English translation. The first three panels show all of our suspension components going into place and actually how to glue them together without gluing the wheels in. So here we have the knuckle and disc brake assembly. So you can see that going onto the disc brakes right and left hand side and it does say here glue only the blackened section do not glue the crosshatch section so the crosshatch section is in the front but the black part is back here so that's very helpful so that you don't actually glue your wheels on by mistake now here is the front wheel assembly so you got your upper a arms and you do have this rack and pinion style steering there's a little pin on there which i think will go pop pop when you move the wheels so it'll lock it into place with whatever direction you're going in and then here we have the two-piece wheels and tires going on and it does have a screw holding it in so you screw that through and then your wheels are on forever so panel four has testing the front wheel movement which is really nice and it shows your hand going on here and your thumbs on finger on the wheels and the direction it moves and the translation in english is a little rough but it says to turn the both front wheels, move the wheels by holding on both tires with your fingers as shown in the figure. So there it is there. Now, here you have to install the pinion gear onto your engine. And again, we're using the FA-130 CAN motor, 
which is, I think, a 1.5 to 3 volt engine, and it shows it tapping it in on there. But be careful again, don't tap hard on the spindle because you don't want to push this through. Uh, but anyway, there's how you put all that together. Now, panel six and seven show the back end of the car. Now, this, of course, will be your axle going through your wheels with that gear, your engine dropping into place, which will connect onto the gear as in a sidewinder style position. Then here we have our wheel all getting put together and then you push them onto the axles. Here is the battery box assembly. So of course it shows all the pieces going together. There's the back end for your positive and negative. And then here's the clips on the other side for the same thing using your AA batteries or they call it a 3A. So I guess AAA, have to see how it goes. They just drop into the compartment and then there is a lid that goes on the top. Panel 8 shows the wiring diagram for the switch so that you can switch your motor on and off. We also have headlight wires and taillight wires, so this thing will really light up and look cool. Man, you could race this against that Buick Skyhawk model that I reviewed earlier on. Now after you have all the wires laid out and in place, panel 9 shows you how to set up the switch so that you can turn your car on and off as well as your headlights. Now look at the seat belts in this model kit. This is really advanced. You have all the belt buckle locks and everything going in place and they go in through these seat belt cables, just like the real thing. Now, unlike the Buick Skyhawk, this model kit actually has the full interior going in place and the center console with the parking brake and the shift lever and the fire extinguisher, I believe that is, actually cover over all the wires in here which go into the headlights and the back and the switch and all that stuff. And then you also have these other covers here and a roll bar up there. So that's what this will look like. So you can see they are really putting in an attempt to hide all the wires from the electric motor, which is nice. And then you have the clutch and the brake and the pedal for your gas all in the front here as well. Panel 12 shows what you need to remove from the body in order to have the headlights and windshield installed. So you get rid of this brace in here and you cut these open for your headlights. Panel 13 shows our dashboard going together with the top being flat black as well as this panel here. The gauge faces are flat white. Then you have your console and your steering wheel and all of this will go together and look excellent. Panel 14 shows our body going together with the door panels being popped into place. You have upholstery and glass going up the sides, as well as all the other cool Ferrari components, much like the rear view mirror here, dashboard, all of this going into the body up from underneath. Panel 15 shows how to install your headlights in the front here. And they are using these little bulbs. I do believe you can replace these with LEDs now. But anyway, there. this is a hinge type assembly so that you actually do get the flip up style headlights, which is really cool. Panel 16, of course, shows how that's all done. And then here it's got this little lever. So you swing it back and the headlights will drop down, swing it forward and they pop up. Panel 17 is the rear taillights going together, which unfortunately don't flip up or down, but will still look cool. You have your lights here, the red taillight lenses, and then your grain of wheat bulb goes into this little housing with a little notch in here so the wires can come out the sides. And again, once this is all lit up, it'll look really, really nice. Now, in order to avoid any light leaks, you want to paint flat black inside the underbody before you hook all this together. But here is how the chassis and the body hook up. What's nice is that the wires you can all cover up with tape to hold them in place. There should be little tabs inside here where you can hook the front end in and then squeeze it up in with a little bit of a bend and let it loose so that the back end hooks into the tabs there. And all of this will look really nice together. Finally, you glue in the exhaust pipes onto the back end. Panels 19 and 20 show the additional details that you need to add on to the front of your Ferrari. So, of course, there's the front grille with the parking and turn signal lamps gluing in place, our side mirrors and windshield wipers. Up the back, you have your vents, your gas filler caps, and your rear bumper and your backup lights. 
and it also shows you how to paint your Ferrari logo on the back. And for the final detail, panel 21 shows you how to install your license plates. And I do believe the artist just wanted to draw this car from both angles, but you can see what the 308 GTB really looks like. Molded in Ferrari red, we have our plastic body. There are some scuffs on it, but again, I could always clear that up with some of that polish that I have. You'll have to clip this out of the center as described in the instructions. And there's your headlights, which you can pop out for the covers. Again, very nicely done. The proportions look pretty excellent. Again, nice detailing on the back. There's the Ferrari logo, which sticks up about the right height. The Ferrari across the trunk lid the spots to put in the grills, and then the grills up front. I give this an excellent mark overall. Very nicely done. Very excellent for the scale. Here's our chassis pan for our model, and the only sad part I have is that the uh, actual lower A arm is busted off on the one side here, but overall you can see just how simplistic this is. Nice detail up the back here where we can see our back of our motor and our muffler and tailpipe. Although pretty basic, there is quite a big drop here for both our batteries to fit in. I do believe they are double A, looking at that now, not triple A's. But again, quite nicely done, very simplistic, and for what it is, it should do the job. Here we have the black plastic components that make up our model kit. As you can see, there's not very many, but then that makes it simple for the type of car it is. A nice model kit with an electric motor in it designed to run around circles on the carpet or race against that Buick Skyhawk. <laughs> but anyway, there's our front bucket seat. We only seem to get one in this kit, so it's not quite the uh, family car or two passenger sports car. It's basically meant for one person. So there's our floor pedals, our door panels, the dashboard, everything that goes with it, and the grills. And basically, based on the instructions where it was saying to paint all these things flat black or whatever, this is molded in the right colors where you really don't need to paint it at all. But of course, being model builders, we will paint it, right? So there's our uh, gear on the metal axle. And again, it's quite proper. I thought it was a plastic axle at first because it's the same black as the rest of the plastic, so I was a little bit worried, but it is steel, so that's always good. Bringing these parts up into the camera, you can see just how nice the detailing is on them. That seat is very slick, though, I'll give it that. Uh, again, excellent work for the vintage and for what it is. This parts tree is all our glass components, and as you can see, there are a lot. Side windows, front glass, rear window, rear glass. There's our tail lamps, which would be nice if they were tinted in red. Our headlights and many other side marker lights and components. Again, detail on here is quite nice. The only sad part is this was in the same bag as the black plastic and the windshield does look a little bit scuffed, but some polish will remove all the scuff marks. Now normally I don't like to show parts in plastic bags because you can't really see what's going on, but I think in this case I'm going to make an exception because all our wires and all our little fine electric components and some glue actually are all in these bags and if I open them up I'm liable to lose something. It happens. <laughs> so anyway, there's all our metal components for hooking all the electronics together. Here's our wires and whatnot, and the chrome parts tree is in there with our disc brakes as well. Now here's a real nice treat. You get some authentic Pirelli Cinturatu P7 tires right from Italy. Well, maybe not Italy, but here is our pentagram style Ferrari wheels, which are quite authentic. As you can see, they are deep chrome, so you need to remove these uh, mold buttons and then your tires are nice and squishy with this really nice tread on here and they easily press right onto those wheels just like that. Last but not least we have this decal sheet and I think its intention is to block out all the windows and make this car look like it is tinted windows if you don't want to have the interior details. But you may be wondering where the license plates are. Well here are the Kansas DP38 
two license plates which are on the actual box lid which means that when you cut these out you'll have the thickness of the cardboard to represent the thickness of the license plate. And that completes our look at our Ferrari 308 GTB in a Ferrari 3512BB box. And if you've built the actual model kit for this and you enjoyed it, why not share the pictures of that over on our Facebook page? I'd like to know how you got the lights to work in it. And I'll leave the link for our Facebook group in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great unboxing video of the Ferrari 308 GTB in the wrong box. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building!